Now we address the effects of nonlinearities on AM and FM signals. We will start with a quick introduction. We will see the impact of nonlinearity on amplitude modulated signals, followed by frequency modulated signals, and then we'll go on to nonlinearity and how to use it to manipulate FM. Whatever we apply, whatever we say for FM applies for phase modulation. Okay, now if the transmitted or modulated signal goes through nonlinearity in the channel, the demodulated signal may be a distorted version, so nonlinearity may cause distortion. We would like to see whether AM and or FM are immune to these nonlinearities, and then we will find out later that we can use this nonlinearity into advantage for the case of FM generation. The following uh, diagram shows a third order nonlinear device. We can see here that we have a constant multiplied by the input plus A2 multiplied by the input squared, and then we have the highest power is cube. This is to, to illustrate the idea. We will start by looking at the impact of nonlinearity on AM signals. So we'll start with double sideband suppressed carrier, and we will see whether we retain the modulated signal at the output or we get something different. So we are going to test this. Somebody might, I, might say, okay, why do we take it through nonlinearity? This is an unintentional nonlinearity which exists in the channel. So it, it, it's there by default. Now to start with, the input is n times cosine, which is the double sideband suppressed carrier definition. And then once you start going through the input, the output f of t will be, as you can see, we're using color code to uh, illustrate the idea. Then if you start dealing with the square and cube, then cosine square is one half into one plus cosine double the angle. Okay, so the first step, I'm just splitting the square here, the cube to the message and to the cosine squared cube. And the following, we use the formula for the trigonometric identity, cosine squared is one half into one plus cosine double the angle. You can see the color is still used, green for the middle term. For the cosine square cube, we're going to split this into cosine times cosine squared. We'll continue using the identity. And now we are collecting uh, the terms together. So we have the following term. Then these two terms are using multiplied by cosine. We collect them together. For the last term, we need one uh, more step. And now we're going to collect the cosines together based on the frequency. So we got one term, which is around zero one term around 2 omega c, another term around 3 omega c. What we are interested in is the modulated term, is the term around cosine omega c. Now we are checking. Are we still retaining the message? Is the message is what got modulated? The answer is no, because we have this term, which is a distortion term. The other terms can be removed by filters. So we can use filter at the required frequency, and we get the term of interest. However, this term, okay is a damaging term now we have the message and a third harmonic or m cube of the message so we can see that am is not immune to nonlinearity next we conclude that double sideband and a modulated signals in general are vulnerable to nonlinearities now let's try this for the case of fm I'm using the same block diagram here, and this is a definition of an FM signal. Again, what we say for FM applies for phase modulated signal. Take it through the system, we'll get again three terms. Okay, the first term, the squared term, and the third and the cubic term. Now we'll, we'll use the same identities, open the brackets, squared will be one half into cosine one plus cosine, double the angle. We're doubling the angle here. And then we continue in the same way until we get uh, the following. We collect the, the terms with similar frequency. So once more, we have a DC term or baseband term. We have a term that's at omega C, two other terms at two and three omega C. Now those terms can be removed by a band bus filter, so there's no problem. Now if you focus about this, this FM signal, you see that we the amplitude has changed. 
here but what matters is the message the angle because the, the cube does not change the content of the angle we can see that fm return the angle changing the the amplitude is just a change on power so we, with that we conclude that if an fm signal goes through nonlinearity we can still get back our signal without losing the message without distorting the message so the message does not get affected by the fm signal if you notice here also we got one fm signal another fm signal a third fm signal the difference between these three is in terms of the carrier frequency okay in terms of the carrier frequency and also in terms of the bandwidth because kf gets scaled here we have 2k and we have 3k here so we, we can get fm signals at different frequency but even with wider bandwidth we can use this into advantage fm signals are immune to um, or do they don't get degraded by nonlinearities as they exist in the channel or in the components so this block shows this block shows that we can use nonlinearity of order p to generate multiple fm signals those signals are different by the center frequency and the bandwidth or the scaling factor k we can use a band pass filter to pick the signal of interest usually we pick the highest order so we, if you want to pick the highest order then your center frequency will be p times omega c and the bandwidth is according to carson's rule okay two times delta f plus the bandwidth of the message with that we can manipulate fm we can get lots of fm signals by controlling designing the, the band pass filter so passing the fm signal through a nonlinear device with a maximum linearity p will give p different fm signals and assume that our nonlinear device is always coupled with a built-in band pass filter so these two will be drawn as one block we'll assume that the band pass filter is attached with the with the details shown with the highest possible nonlinearity frequency we'll see the more examples as we go into the next videos